Hey YouTube, welcome to episode one of differentiation. So today we're going to look at the fundamentals. We're going to find gradients at a specific point and then make sure you stay tuned to next lesson where we're going to look at the general gradient function. So keeping it nice and simple for now, to find the ordinary gradient of a function, you would have studied it a bit at GCSE. You would have been given a velocity time graph and they asked you to find the gradient. Now to find the gradient at GCSE, they would have given you graph paper and what you would have had to do, you'd have had to do a kind of estimation. You would have drawn a tangent and you would have estimated by working out the gradient of that tangent. You would have picked two points and you would have then done the change in y over the change in x. And at GCSE, when you found the gradient of a velocity time graph, that showed you the acceleration. But in pure maths, we generally don't like approximate your answers. So here is what you guys have been using this whole time. It's a theorem. It is that the gradient of a curve at a given point is equal to the gradient of the tangent at that same point. So when the question at GCSE asked you to find out the gradient at that specific point, P, what you did was is you drew a tangent because the gradient value of this tangent is exactly the same as the gradient value of the curve at that point. If I changed P to over here, it would have been this kind of situation. And the gradient of this point, uh, the gradient of this tangent would have been the same as the curve. If we did it here, you can see that the curve is a lot steeper and the tangent is also much steeper. So it would have had a larger gradient. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you're learning something, then hit that like button and comment down below to let me know what you want to learn next. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. So pure mathematicians will avoid approximating answers if possible. Luckily for us, if we know the graph's equation, then we can find the exact gradient at certain points. I'm going to show you how we can do it when we know the point we want. And then in the next episode, we're going to do the general gradient function. So find the gradient of the function y equals x squared at the point 1, 1. Now the problem here, just like at GCSE, is we don't want to draw a line because if you get, if you line up 20 people and you ask them to draw a tangent at that point 1, 1, most of them, if not all of them, are going to draw the tangent differently. So it's not an accurate answer. So we're going to go back to like the fundamentals of straight lines. How, what do you need to draw a straight line? You need two points. So to draw a tangent, which is a straight line at one point is basically impossible freehand. So we need two points. So what we do is we pick another random point on this graph. So here I've drawn the x squared graph. I'm just going to pick another random point here. I'm going to call it P. Now, I could have chosen P to be anywhere on this curve. I just so happened to put it up here. So this is where the algebra comes in. So this x value here is 1. All I did was I moved some amount to the right yeah, to get to this point P. Now, we like to use h to represent that distance. I just went some distance h to the right on my graph. So if the x value here is 1, what would the x value of p be? Well, it's 1, and we're going h to the right. So it's just 1 plus h. So what is the coordinates of p then? Well, the coordinates of p is 1 plus h. And then the y coordinate, remember the graph is y equals x squared. So whatever the x value is, you're just going to square it. So if the x value is 1 plus h, we're going to square it, 1 plus h squared. And that's our coordinates for p. And then we are going to connect the dots. So this represents a chord, right? You connect any two points on a curve, that's a chord. If I just say I did know how to draw an accurate tangent, it would look maybe something like this, yeah? You can see that the chord I drew is not really a great approximation of the uh, the red line. Yeah, it's a bit steeper, but it's an approximation of the red line. So we're going to work out the gradient of the chord, and then we'll discuss what we do after. So we're going to work out the gradient by working out the change in x over the change in y. So we're going to write gradient of chord. Okay. It's the change in y over the change in x. So the change in y values, so the y value here is 1 plus h squared. Then we're going to subtract the y value of the other coordinate, which is 1, divide by the change in x values. 
And instead of doing one plus H minus one, you actually know it's H. We did that already. We fixed it to be H. Now we can do some simplification. So we can expand this bracket. So if you write out the bracket twice and expand, you'd get one plus two H plus H squared minus one. Yeah, that minus one at the end, all over H. And you should notice that the ones cancel on the top. So we get two H plus H squared over H. Okay, we can do more simplification here. You might notice that on the top, we have H's on both terms and we're dividing by H. So we can split the fraction here. We have two H over H. Two H over H is two. And then we have H squared divided by H, which is just H. So that's the gradient of the chord in general. So uh, if H was two, yeah, so if I made this distance here H two, then the gradient of that chord would have been four. But now is where the theory side comes in. I drew that point P here. Where could I have done that point P to get a better approximation of that red line? Well, the answer to that is I need to move it closer. Because now if I draw a line here, it would be much shallower than the chord we initially drew, something like that, yeah? What if I made it here? That's even better. So what we're noticing is that if we take this point and move it closer and closer to the point in which we want to find the gradient, the chord approximation becomes better. And now you have to think about what happens to the H value as you move those points closer and closer to the point in question. Well, the H value must get smaller because look, these points are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So the H value must be getting smaller. So this is where we get to the point where we think theoretically, what does the H value have to be so that we're at the point? So when we're at that point, the two points meet and there you get the accurate gradient of the red line. So this is where the notation comes in. So the gradient is, so when you move a point towards something else, we call that a limit as H tends to zero. Yeah, so we're, we're making that H value smaller by making it smaller. We're moving those points towards the point in question. So it's the limit as H tends to zero of two plus H. And then at when H is theoretically zero, we get the chord, which will uh, kind of trace the red line. So what does this give you when H is zero? We're left with two. So the gradient of Y equals X squared at the point one, one is two. And you could apply this to any function. So I'm gonna show you one example like I've just done now. So in the next episode, I'm gonna make sure that I show you how to do it generally. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at how do you find the general gradient function of X squared so that if you ask me to find the gradient at one one. I don't need to do this process specifically for one one. I know what the general gradient function is and you only need to tell me what the X value you're interested in and I can sub it into the gradient function. It'll just tell me the gradients there and then. Yeah, so it saves us a lot of time. But here I'm showing you where what I'm gonna show you next time comes from. So make sure guys, you check it. Make sure you like the video. If you learned something today, make sure you're subscribed. So you are here for my next episode where I discuss the more um, where I discuss the more theoretical side which we then use throughout our A-level maths. So I hope you enjoyed and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next episode. Peace.